How's it going everybody? Playing some more Manish Cap today, and today I'm going to be going through the Palace of Winds. Now, this temple, palace, whatever you want to call it, it's... There's some things that definitely make it more difficult. Um, for the most part, I think most of the challenge here was in the ending of the place. I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I did a sort of, like, a test playthrough beforehand, just to make sure I could, like, somewhat confidently pass through everything decently, which didn't exactly go super 100% according to plan, but I still did my best. Um, the main thing that I'm not really a fan of in this temple is the cracked floorboards. As you can see, that just fell down one. Um, they just... I feel like there's too many of them, but, you know, once you get the rock escape, it makes things a bit more easy in terms of traversal and whatnot, so just don't be like me and stumble into them a thousand times and you'll be alright. Um, overall, I really like the temple. The one thing that really I do not like is the boss fight here because, I don't know, it's, it's a strange boss fight. Um, it it kind of seems like, I don't want to say impossible to no damage, but extremely difficult if you were to ever attempt it because I can't really see and you'll see later on there's not really too many um like ways to it would complete the fight without really dodging I mean you can um I, you'll just have to see it's it's definitely something else but overall I like the temple aside from the boss fight um, there's a few uses of the um splitting mechanic um, there was one mechanic or one splitting mechanic area that I did not do the correct way but the cool thing about Zelda games is that there's usually multiple ways to do a specific thing and I guess I just found out one of those ways um, you'll see later on that I uh, there's a spot where you could use the splitting mechanic I'm assuming it's intended but you can also use the remote bomb as well and then a spin attack it's for knocking um, floor switches so I improvised, and I like that you can do that with Zelda games, it's really cool. Adds to the, um, I guess, creative aspect. And a surprising, surprising thing about this temple is you actually get the item fairly early. It's actually going to be coming up in this next room on the left. I guess not room, since it's outside, but a little platform. And I wonder if this is part of the, um... Inspirations for Tears of the Kingdom, being in this whole uh, cloud top area. It definitely gives me similar vibes to Tears of the Kingdom, so who knows, perhaps this was a big inspiration. Although I imagine City in the Sky was as well. Probably some other sky areas that I can't think of, but you know. So for the Wisp Robes, what I like to do is spin attacks, because then you usually hit them twice and that kills them. Look at you there. Um, just want to be careful of the directions they're all facing. Um, there's always going to be somewhere you can stand where you're not going to get hit. And when we deal with later Wisp Robes, we'll have Rock's Cape and then things are a bit easier to dodge. But I was like just tanking all the hits because Link's a tank, you know? But definitely an interesting mini boss. Um, heavy is all the one vibes. I think they might be a bit easier in this game than they were in Zelda 1. Because Zelda 1 race ropes were kind of a pain in the butt, especially when you were like unprepared, like the weak equipment and whatnot. But in this game, they're not that big of a deal. You just want to avoid being hit by their uh, magic beams and whatnot. So now that we have Rock's Cape, we can fly back here. And then instead of going up to the clouds right away, there's one little chest over this way that we can get. And it's going to be a red kinstone piece. Now, by this point in the game, there's not really too many more red kinstone fusions that I can think of. Um, as of the commentary on this video, uh, I already filmed the next part, got all the fusions going. So I'm going to need to put that video together. And hopefully it should come out before the end of the week. I might even finish this game by the end of the week, depending on when I decide to upload the parts and whatnot. But we'll see. So now we can make our way up to the next floor of the... Uh, Palace of Winds, and I like this whole cloud mechanic. I just don't understand how they can carry Link's weight, but given that this whole place probably runs on some sort of magic, I guess it makes sense. 
So for these electric, um, I forget, are these choo-choos? Might be called choo-choos. Um, you can just shoot arrows at them, or you can boomerang them to death until they fall off the ledge, or throw bombs. Uh, I personally like using the arrows to take care of them, it just makes things easy and simple. Now we can continue on this way. Um, I don't believe you can shoot these explosive guys, um, which is a bit strange, because there is one later on that you can actually take care of. Um, you may be able to use a well-timed bomb, but I'm not certain on that. You can just jump past it pretty easily. Um, this isn't the puzzle that I was referring to with the split mechanic. But that'll be coming up. And uh, the thing with the split puzzles, there's never really any that are too, too difficult. Um, aside, I think, from the Ice Palace one, there was one there that was a little bit tricky. But for the most part, I think they're fairly simple. Um, I suppose you could use the bomb and spin attack for this one as well. I wonder if that's a speedrunning strategy, actually. Using your bombs and then spin attacks? I'd have to watch some of those, because speedruns, like, I more so got interested from Ocarina of Time speedruns, but I prefer the glitchless, the, excuse me, glitchless stuff, so I don't know, I'm assuming that's a strategy, because it takes less time. But I guess you just use the split mechanic just because. It's kind of what we've been doing the whole game. And I like that little fan, I guess, animation they have. I mean, they had to improvise with what they had with the Game Boy Advance stuff, and it really shows. I think they did a good job with animating stuff and whatnot, making the um, whole uh, depth and whatnot. Just certain things stand out and certain things don't. It's really cool. Fortunately, we don't get knocked off here because the little barrier. So I wonder what the whole story is with the uh, Palace of Winds. For the most part, it seems like it was just made to protect the element, but maybe it was a kingdom at one point, because they do have these really fancy rugs all over the place, and it makes you wonder, like, was it part of the Wind Tribe that lived up here, maybe? I don't know. I guess it'd be interesting to uh, find out a little bit more, but who knows? One thing I really do love about this game, and I think this is the only Zelda game where you can actually control how many times Link swings, like the harder you mash the button, the more he swings. I don't think it works this way in, um, what game am I thinking of? Link to the Past. I don't think it works that way in a Link to the Past or the Oracle games, but I, I do like that that's how the swing mechanic works in this game. You just mash the button and then Link just swings a million times, although I don't think it necessarily does damage. Like, there might be a certain damage cap, like you can only do a certain amount of damage per, um, I guess, seconds or so. But still, it's really cool. You can just mash the crap out of the swinging. I think I might have goofed this part up once. Pretty sure you can do that in one attempt, you just need to be careful with the skulls. So for those of you who have um, watched the Triforce, or not Triforce series, the Four Swords video I did with Cody, you will know that we struggled a little bit with these uh, moving floating platforms and we cannot get a certain chest in the, uh, I think it was Raddy's Palace. I just, I, I, I don't think we're good at, like, platforming with Rock's Cape, but, you know, in this game, it, it seems a lot more, uh, fluid, I suppose. I think that's the word. Like, the movement is definitely easier to control than it is in Four Swords, which is interesting, because now that I'm thinking about it, I think a lot of the mechanics in this game were based off of Four Swords. And I'm assuming maybe they just had some extra room on the GBA cartridge. 
Because they must have been working on Minish Cap at that same time, right? Can't believe I made that jump there, but don't worry, I fall. But, yeah, there must have been extra room on the GBA cartridge. I'm assuming, and then they just put on the four swords. Because this is the same sprite that they used then, so... I don't know. I do like Four Swords. I do for the Anniversary Edition, though. Because the, um... I forget what it's called. The Realm of Ages or something? It's a cool little area that like, goes back through previous Zelda games, like Link to the Past, Zelda 1... I think it's Zelda 1, and then... What is it? Link's Awakening? It's It's got some cool art styles going on there. I think the only thing... I think the Switch should maybe get some DSI wear going. That'd be really cool. Especially because it was like a limited thing. I mean, I think you could only get it on the DSI. And I fortunately do have a copy of it. Um, gotta figure out some way to back that up, though, at some point. Because it's on my unmodded 3DS, so... I don't know. Work something out, and... Maybe get a playthrough of it at some point on the channel. Otherwise, I'll just see if I can play it with Steven sometime when I visit him. Maybe even Cody if he ever visits. We'll see. I do like this little uh, puzzle here, the jumping through the floors. I think that was a really underrated thing about this game. I like the, um, and if, if I'm not mistaken, this is like something you do in Super Mario World. Like you climb along the fence and then you can switch sides. I I'm assuming that might have been taken from Super Mario World. Because it's a cool mechanic, but underused, definitely. And I can't remember if it was in Four Swords or not. I don't think it was. And you know another thing that was really underused in this game is the cane. Like, it's been so long, and this is the first time I've used it in, like, what, two dungeons? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just heavily underused, in my opinion. And I don't know if I figure out what that door is for or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then make sure you don't goof this part up because you uh, will have to exit the area again. And it definitely took me a minute. Like, you just saw that there's a little bit of a cut. I did have to rewind it because I couldn't figure out how to reset the pots, but I think you just have to go, like, back up the stairs to reset them, which I couldn't think of for some reason. So. You'll see that I figured it out here, though. I do find it odd that, um, Link is small as he is. He can push the barrels, or excuse me, push the pots, but he can't lift them up. It's a little interesting, but, you know, it's easier to push something than it is to, uh, lift it over your head, especially when you're this tiny, but... What was it that gave him the strength? Is it, like, power bracelet? But doesn't increase his strength when he's big. I wonder how that works. Okay. So, while we continue to make our way through this temple, I do kind of want to talk about the next Zelda game that I'm going to be doing. Now, I'm not 100% certain on this, but I might start with Link to the Past GBA. The reason I say might is because Echoes of Wisdom is coming out, and I don't want to overlap the two games, but at the same time, I really like Link to the Past, especially the GBA version, so... Uh, I don't know. I, I'll probably do a community poll some point, but if anyone's watching this far and has any preference on whether or not they want me to do Echoes of Wisdom next, or Link to the Past, the GBA version, or if they want me to do both, please let me know in the comments. Um, I always appreciate feedback. And then my next non-Zelda game will be Scooby-Doo 1. I think it's called First Frights. Pretty fun game. And this little part here, I kind of made it more difficult than I needed to be. You just needed time to jumps, which I think I struggled the first two times. Yeah. 
might get it this time though. You just gotta time your jumps is all. And I don't really think there's any leniency on this left side, so just make sure you time it right. And I know this little puzzle part, this little black part looks confusing, but you actually can't go down the stairs. Because you gotta go this way. And I like this part, because it makes Link fly. So this is uh, one of those times when I was talking about the uh, tiles being irritating that you can fall through them. Just because when you're trying to take care of these, uh... I forgot what they're called, like, Lekki somethings? They're from the Mario games. And they're just kind of in an inconvenient spot. You might be able to use your boomerang or arrows, but from what I found, the gust jar just works best to take care of them. And this is another part that I thought was really cool. So at first you might be thinking, how in the sand hill do I make this jump? And what you actually do is jump off from this cloud, and then it turns out that the whole perspective thing, like that cloud, was actually aligned perfectly with how you jumped. It just didn't look like it. And you can see the only piece of heart in this temple right there. Which, I almost forgot actually. I, I somehow didn't forget it when I did my practice playthrough. But this time around, I did almost forget about it. So there's going to be a little... I think there's two cuts that come up later on. In which I finally get around to getting the piece of heart. And then this is another one of those puzzles where it, the perspective makes it look like it's going over the ledge, but it's actually aligned. Like, perfectly, I suppose. I do wonder how the Wind Tribe got around here. I'm assuming there must be, like, some sort of pass-down ability that they have to make their way up the clouds, but I wonder where all the beds and stuff are. Perhaps they fell down when this place was overtaken by monsters. I don't know. That's another thing that I'm curious about, like, what happens, like, post-game, like, Link takes care of all the problems in these dungeons, and then, what happens, like, the people, like, re-inhabit their temples and whatnot, or, what, what goes on? That's what I want to know. And then this is, a, I guess, a early boss key temple. We're gonna be getting the boss key, and then there's, there's, there's actually two boss doors. Um, but one down there, and then one for the actual boss itself, so... I'm guessing that, um... I don't know. Maybe the boss... Excuse me. The boss, um... I don't know, I guess... I don't know why, why is there two boss doors here? I know it's not the first temple to do so, but still, like, is that just considered his area? I don't know. It's weird. And then, you can always get fairies from those guys, and each time you reset the room, you'll actually still be able to get the fairies back, so if you're low on health, you can just keep exiting and re-entering the room, and then you'll get enough fairies to uh, get your hearts back up, which is really cool. Again, the uh, little anti- I think they're called anti-fairies, or maybe that's only in Link to the Past. One of the games they're called anti-fairies. And then there's a little pot moving puzzle here, which might look a little confusing, but just don't goof it up. See? Pretty easy. And then 
onward to the next area. Which, all we gotta do for this room is step on the switch and then go for a little flight. Or flight, I should say, not for a little fly. One thing that I, I don't really take um, too much usage of very often is actually the sword beams, because now that we have a ranged attack with the sword, it frees up an item slot, and it can just make some of the combat a little bit easier. Um, like if I had it still with these guys, I could just fire sword beams, take care of them pretty easy. And Oh, another thing that I myself didn't notice, you actually have to charge the arrow for the light arrows to get to work. I was wondering why my arrows were still so weak, and it wasn't the arrows that were weak, it was just that I wasn't using the bow properly. Had I used the bow properly, things would have worked. And you don't need to kill these guys either, I was just trying to kill them for the heck of it. Again, another room where we just gotta step on the switch and then go for a little flight off to the, I guess, the top of the room. And then we were in this area earlier. We just push that little block there, like so, grab the key. And then it's gonna be this block on the right. So we're actually getting our dungeon key, our big, big key, um, fairly early, like we're only about halfway through the temple. Normally you seem to get it later on in most dungeons, but not here. And then there's an arrow pointing down because you might be wondering, mm, what the Samuel am I supposed to do? You're actually supposed to jump off this place and then land down on a platform that somehow doesn't break Link's legs because fall damage was not invented at this time yet. Unless you're playing the Nintendo 64 games. But there's never been a 2D Zelda game that has fall damage. I'm not very good at fighting these Dark Nuts. Um, as you can tell. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the strategy is. I just like to do uh, spin attacks and then hope for the best. Which seem to work out in this fight. There's definitely better ways to do so. Um, probably involving rolls and rock escape and whatnot. You just, you gotta be super skilled to be able to fight these dudes. Which, I'm kind of lacking at, but it's okay, because I do take care of them like, eventually. Care of. And this blue war point is basically the uh, halfway point of the temple, so if you need to restock on anything, you can just go ahead and land on the portal, and then go back to the start. So, this area, for me, I made it a little bit complicated because I fell a few times. I don't know if I cut those parts out or not, but we'll see. I do know I spliced things up a little bit just so things flowed a little more a little bit more smoothly, smoothly black, I can't speak. Um, it's pretty late for us to be getting the compass as well, which I don't know why they made that choice for this dungeon, but it is what it is, you know? Don't know why that skull was on that little spiky thing there, it's a little strange. Don't get bullied by these skeleton guys like I do. Alright, so this is the room I was talking about earlier with the uh, whole splitting mechanic. Because I wasn't really paying much attention to the floor tiles. I was more focused on how I was going to take care of these guys with all the cracked flooring and whatnot. But it's... It, to me, my way seemed easier. 
as you'll see in a second, than what it probably would be. Um, I actually don't know if you were intended to split for this room or not, or just do the cheap way like I do. Because I was like, ain't no way am I splitting up for this part. So put a bomb there, and then spin attack, and at the same time you spin attack, um, press the button for the bomb. Takes care of all the switches. I always wonder for these temples, like, who in the Sam Hills leaving all these keys just in random treasure chests all over the place? Like, it's, it's someone at some point must have locked this whole place up. Now, I know I'm overthinking a lot of this stuff, but just the, the Wind Tribe's just casually going around locking all these doors up with the intent that the only person that's ever going to come up here is Link. And I don't know if it was there's prophecy for them or not. I'm assuming there must have been, but it's still just someone going around locking all these doors, having to fly around these tornadoes. And I wonder if whoever locked the boss room was just like, how do I get out now? Because they're so far off, and I guess they could jump down, but that, that would be a little dangerous, you know? So I don't, I don't know how that all works. I don't think we need to jump down that pit for any reason. Spin attack for these two switches, and we do need to fall down there because there's a chest. Um, I don't think it's a key, so we might not need to fall down there, but it's still recommended. Or maybe it is a key. Yeah, it is a key. Okay. And you don't need to fight these Gibdos. They're just like hugging Link. So if you want to get hugged, go for it. If not, then just don't get hugged. Easy peasy. This is the part of me falling. Part of the reason that I kept some of these in is just to showcase that it's okay to fall, you know? I mean, not everyone's going to be perfect with this dungeon. I know there's a lot of walkthroughs out there that just go through everything flawlessly. But it's really... it's You're going to have some mistakes. It is what it is, you know? Just don't feel bad if you fall. I know I said in my previous fight that you spin attack to uh, take care of these guys a bit easier, but I didn't really realize that a whole lot during that fight, and that's okay. And this is kind of where things get a little bit confusing, but mostly just because I was kind of not paying attention on where to go and whatnot, because I did have to backtrack for two chests, which you can get now. Um, I'll put the timestamps for some of the stuff, the, the important stuff that is in the description, like the heart piece, which I should have gotten earlier. Um, can't get it yet at this point, but I think it's on this next floor that you can get it first, and I probably should have gotten it now versus 
skipping it, which... I don't know, I guess I thought it was a different room, that's why I didn't go for it, because the whole abyss thing on the left, top left up there, you'll see in a second. So, the piece of heart is in that doorway up there, and I just decided that I was too scared to uh, have to fall down again, even though it's for a heart piece, you know? So... probably should go for it now versus having to backtrack for it but if not it's all right and then this is the time where you might be confused on what to do because if you tried this earlier with the arrows and these floating line guys you'd be like hey this isn't working but it actually does work it just didn't work in that specific area because now you can shoot him and he'll explode these blocks for you Versus, I guess you could try to throw a bomb repeatedly, which I don't think you'd have much success doing, but if you want to try it, then go for it. And then we're going to be getting our next little warp just up here. Let's see. Now we have easy access to the start of the temple, the uh, I guess middle of the temple, and up here. So, if you need to restock on anything, if you want to prepare for the boss fight, we're relatively close to the boss, so always good to have items if you need them, especially if you're not too confident with your uh, bottled equipment, which I probably could have came in with more charms. Probably a offensive charm would have been more useful than a defensive one, but the green one I picked, it, it served its purpose. It kept me alive, which I'm happy about, so all that matters is that you survive. And I think I'm going to go ahead and say that this might be one of the most difficult Zelda games I've played. Because i played all of them, except the CDI games, and I would argue this is more difficult than Adventure Link. Just because, like, everything does so much damage to you, and everything's out to kill you and whatnot, and it's just a whole, whole dangerous game. So you might be wondering, what is the point of this room? There's no bombable walls, there's no places to jump, that's wrong there is a bombo wall. It just doesn't show there's a bombo wall. You could use your sword to figure it out, but otherwise you can just plant a bomb there and be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And you might have been able to see this from the inside. I'm not sure, because I didn't go up this far, but, you know, maybe that's how you're supposed to figure it out. And this room looks terrifying, and it is, so just take your time, like, go really slow, and you'll be fine. See? Just gotta do a frame at a time. And if you mess up the puzzle, you can just backtrack or just rewind your switch. Which, in this case, I wouldn't call cheating because a lot of things in this temple are a pain in the butt. And you don't need to worry about exploding these guys on the way back because you can just walk straight ahead. Easy peasy. And then we are going to want to fall down those uh, black tiles up there, but I kind of did this in a strange order, so, you know, you can do it however you want to do it. You can jump down those crack tiles. Um, actually, I'll, I'll see if I can do some sort of editing here, but uh, maybe uh, look at the gist and just dump down those tiles up there. Otherwise, just rewind your switch. It's not really cheating if you're just backtracking, is it? So this is how you access the boss area, so... If you're just playing just to play, like you don't want 100% the game, this is the way to go. Alternatively, um, in the timestamps, I'll leave to get the heart piece first, and then go this way. Just so things are a little bit more clear. I don't think you really need to defeat these guys. Um, they're just mostly to annoy you. Um, the chests, I believe, are kinstone pieces and rupees in this area. So nothing too, too exciting, you know? But 
if you need rupees this late in the game and you still don't have access to the, uh, the whole treasure shop area, then it might be a good idea to um, grab them, but otherwise just don't worry about them. Because I'm not sure how that works in this game with 100% completion. I don't know if you need to get every chest in the temples. I don't think you do, but maybe you do. I'll have to uh, check on that at some point before I finish the game, because I have not fought that yet. The only thing I've done is gotten all the kinstone fusions, and then most of the trophies, so... Might have to check on that. So at this point in the dungeon, I was just like, yeah, I don't care if I take super tons of damage and whatnot, but... Um, it's... I was liking the temple from the start, but when it was coming to this area, I was just like, oh my gosh. Because I was taking so much damage throughout this temple, which... I could honestly do better. I just, most of the time, excuse me, time, choose to tank all the damage, and... Not be super smart about everything, which I feel I've done better playthroughs with all the games where I actually like take my time with certain things and don't just like rush everything, you know. But hopefully, only to the past, I show a better job. Or echoes of wisdom, whichever I decide to do next, because I definitely can do a lot better than how I've been playing. And I don't know. I just. I guess it's the whole temple that maybe messed me up, or I don't know. But I can definitely do better. And this is one of the points where I was finally discovering that you can actually use uh, Ezlo to uh, like tell you them, tell you something with the uh, select button, which I think I've done in previous videos. But I was just like, oh yeah, you can do this. You see the boss room right there. And I think it's coming up on the split in just a second. I think when I push these blocks. Yep. So this is how you get the chest up here. You just toss a bomb up here. You might be able to use the boomerang too. Um, bombs are easier though. Jump across here. And grab the chest. one more chest that I'll be getting, as well as the heart piece. Um, only really exciting thing left is the heart piece, so you can go ahead and skip to that if you're interested. Otherwise, you can skip ahead to the boss, because all we're getting left here is just rupees and kinstone pieces. So you can hop down here. mini boss section here, which is interesting. I wonder what the floor design choice, and why they chose those uh, six tiles there. I don't know if it's just to tell you you can jump down or what. This is how you get the heart piece now. Just walk straight on up here, keep rolling, grab the heart piece, or piece art. Then it's gonna be boss time. So you just jump on up these clouds, Jumping, keep jumping, keep jumping. And here we go. And here comes the struggle fight 3000. So, I like the concept of this boss fight. I like the whole airborne battle, but some of the damage you can take just. 
Like, without warning, like, you already saw I took half hearted damage just from, like, jumping over his tail. And then, this first phase is pretty simple. You just align with the uh, tiles down there, how you're supposed to slash it. But then you jump on this guy, and he's he's annoying to jump on. Um, and his damage area is really wacky, because, well, not that I didn't jump, but you'll see once I start to jump, it might take a time or two. I still take damage for some reason, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if I jumped too soon, too late, whatever. But he's he's got a weird attack. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to be part of the boss, like it's a little baby or something, but it's it's a cool boss design. Like, don't get me wrong, with it. it's a really cool boss design. I like the whole airborne bosses and Zelda games. Like Argarok was really cool. This guy's a cool design. I'm just not a fan of the fight. Because you keep getting interrupted by those little bubbles, and like, what in the same hill are you supposed to do? Like, I don't think you can jump when you're um, split into three, so... I don't know how you're supposed to go about beating this guy if you're just supposed to keep taking the hits, or... What are you supposed to do? I don't know, but... I I'd give the fight a, a 6 out of 10. 6 for the, like, cool whole style of the boss, but then... Not giving it anymore, because... You keep getting shot whenever you try to do anything. And I'm guessing that is how you're supposed to do the phase. You're just supposed to dodge and, like, have your clones tank the hits for you. I think my favorite temple so far has probably been the Cave of Flames. I think that was a really good one. I like the whole whirlwind aspect. Um, although this place does have the whirlwinds too, but I like the whirlwind uses there. Like... The um, wind coming up from the lava sort of idea, which Chase Kingdom uses too, which is cool. It's sort of Breath of the Wild, I think. Like heat causes updrafts, right? Something like that. But cool idea. Maybe it was an inspiration for Tears of the Kingdom. Seems like it could have been, but I'm not sure. I'm also not sure how this boss fight works. Um, but basically, you just keep rinsing and repeating, trying not to get hit by every single obstacle. At some point, you'll take the boss out. It's just a really strange boss. I feel this is probably where the, um, having the offensive charm would have really uh, helped out a bit more because then you do double damage I'm not sure how this one works I don't know if it gives you double damage or like 1.5 damage because for Fer for Fer for charm is like a combination of the two defense and offense so I'm not 100% certain how it works but it does something And you know, maybe part of the issue I was having here is because I didn't take care of that, like, blue manta ray thing first. Because I fell off early, and then it took me onto this guy, so maybe you're supposed to defeat him first? Because that would make more sense. And then I was struggling to jump back on the guy. For some reason, his tail damage is which I don't know why. Maybe it's prickly or something? boss gauntlet would have been cool for the early 2 d Zelda games, just being able to refight the bosses. I kind of got that idea from Pokemon. Now there's that, was it the Verse Recorder or something? Verse Seeker? And that allowed you to refight trainers, so why not do the same thing for Zelda games? Allow you to refight the bosses somehow. I know in Ocarina of Time you can do so in Skyward Sword and... No, I don't think you could in Breath of the Wild, but you can in Tears of the Kingdom if you go down to the depths. And in Majora's Mask. But no 2D Zelda games as far as I know. And 
and that takes care of the boss. Link somehow gets down, which maybe he parachuted, I don't know, but we'll see in a sec. He's gonna successfully reach the ground. Now, all in all, I would say this temple is a 7 out of 10. I'm not giving it an 8 or a 9 because the, um, the boss is terrible. Cool gimmick, but kind of portrayed badly, like it could have been done better, but that is the Palace of Lint taken care of. Next up is going to be the final collection video, so I want to thank you guys all for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you.